Hello everyone. Welcome to our conference, The Laser Weapon, again, Game Changer Against Drone. Sorry. My name is Roman and I'm a communication manager at Silas. Let me introduce you um, the speakers for this conference. Maria Maït Moussa. She is an engineer at Silas. She specialized in the piloting of experiments and demonstrations of LMAP, laser weapon system, which obviously requires a very good knowledge of the system. And she was also in charge of the piloting of the Sardinia exercise for Silas. Colonel Laurentar is sales manager at Silas for two years and in charge of selling LMAP system. Before that, he was in the French army for 27 years. And Colonel and Professor Alexandre Papy, engineer specialized in weapon systems and ballistics. He, was a very solid, he has a very solid military background. He is professor in the Department of Weapon Systems and Ballistics of the Royal Military Academy in Brussels, Belgium. He is part of different NATO and European counter drones initiatives and is chairing the NATO DAT counter drones projects where he recently directed the NNTX 22 exercise. His main domains of experts are the neutralization part of the kill chain and field experimentations. Now let me introduce you the subject before giving the floor to Laurent. In, 20, in 2021, Silas carried out at the Biscarros Test Center the first real test of its LMAP laser weapon dedicated to counter drones. During five weeks of testing, the laser weapon shot down 40, 40 drones with 100% hit at one kilometer. In 2022, Silas deployed NMAP at the Peace Camp in Sardinia, the largest joint testing ground in Europe during NNTX 22C, an operational eg exercise organized by NATO. The system operated by military people from the British Army once again demonstrated its efficiency under safety conditions. These impressive performances have sparked a strong interest in the, large, in the laser weapon against drones by the French defense community. Next step is the use of NMAP in support of major events protection on French territory or in war operations. Laurent, the floor is yours. So, uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, the weapon system is a uh, why a game changer? It's because it's a new system, a disruptive uh, weapon system uh, with uh, some uh, specific uh, characteristic. Uh, and uh, the main is uh, it is light. It is uh, energy uh, transmitted by light, and um, so that you have to uh, know to to learn to use this kind of system. Um, you have to take in consideration. Uh, different uh, characteristics. Uh, the first one, uh, the beam is straight. So, it is a really precise uh, system. And uh, some uh, people uh, speak about uh, sni uh, laser sniping. You will hit very precisely a target. And uh, this system uh, will put on the target um, a beam large like a, a two euro uh, coin. So you can choose um, the position the, where to hit the target and so the effect will depend of the vulnerability of the position. The second characteristic is the speed. As you know, a light is uh, very fast. So when you hit on the button to uh, fire, Instantaneously, instantaneously, excuse me, you will hit the target. And it is quite different with a, a, a bullet because you have to wait for uh, the, um, the, the time of uh, trajectory, trajectory to hit the target. So immediately you can see if you hit the target. And the last characteristic in a, in a shoot is you have to maintain the beam on the target 
because the heat of the beam have to uh, to um, to make its effect to burn the, the target and so to destroy uh, the uh, the target. So uh, this kind of um, of, um, of, uh, of it is really different of a usual system. The uh, there is other characteristic like logistics is very low because uh, very you need only a few energy to to to, to make uh, it. There is no ammunition to bring or to uh, to store to for for that, so it's uh, very uh, easy to to use and. Um, you uh, and the last um, uh, uh, characteristic is the beam is invisible to uh, the view. You can't see uh, the beam. So <coughs> we first done la last year uh, de um, a demonstration in France to uh, validate the systems and the challenge with Sardinia was to uh, use it in an exercise in operational conditions and uh, I will let the, the, the micro to, to Alex. Thank you Laurent. So my name is Alex Papi. I'm working for Belgian Defense. Uh, I was chairing and I'm chairing the activity and NTEX 22C and the Defense Against the Rims program of work at a uh, NATO level. And um, well, I, I will give some uh, some highlights about what what happened. I took some notes so I, I don't forget uh, anything. So NNTEX 22C, uh, that's the acronym. We love acronym at NATO level uh, in the military in general. That is the the NATO non-lethal technology exercise. That is something that is coming from history. The first NNTEX uh, came uh, in 2013, and I will not detail why we use uh, that that name uh, for the counter UAV because that's not so interesting. Anyway, that, that, that capstone event, an NTEX 22C that we organized in Sardinia last March, that is the capstone event of something that is bigger and that is the Defense Against Terrorism Program of Work Counter UAV. Uh, and the title of that project, that is the Comparative Analysis of Lethal versus Low Collateral Damage Effectors Against Low, Small and Slow UAVs. So the goal is really to, to compare what you can do, what a, a squad can do with their uh, weapons against small drones and what the added value of dedicated systems with low collateral damage uh, can be. And uh, that exercise uh, is NATO funded, partially NATO funded, because I'm sure that Silas uh, put a lot of money in the organization as well. Uh, and um, we had 10 nations that were part, that are part of that activity. Uh, the, the most, let's say, active ones were Belgium, Belgium at the lead. Uh, the United Kingdom brought some troops, was responsible for the, the analysis of the data. United States of America for the capture of the uh, data and Italy, we did it in Sardinia as a host nation. And um, on the side of these nations, we also had companies like Silas who did bring systems and these systems were representing technologies. So the goal is certainly not in that activity to compare rifle A versus rifle B or jammer from company A versus jammer from company B. And indeed, well, Silas uh, is the representative for the, the laser uh, weapon. Uh, the, the specifics about this exercise, we are looking in this exercise at the neutralization. You might know that to target drones and to neutralize drones, we have to detect them, we have to track them, we have to identify them, and then we might decide to neutralize them. So you, you, you cannot just take one brick out of that equation and just look at that, but that was the main focus of the exercise, even if the full kill chain had to be uh, implemented. Uh, it is an exercise, so we are talking about soldiers, operators, and Silas had uh, soldiers from the United Kingdom, other technologies are soldiers from Belgium, and the goal was also to see, well, in what way 
uh, lightly trained operators can really operate the system. How easy is that? How convenient is that to use the, the system? And, and well, that, that has been, uh, has been a, a big success, I guess, because at the end of the day, the soldiers were able to uh, use a system and also able not to destroy it, which is always uh, something difficult when you are talking with soldiers. The, the, the third point is the realistic scenarios. It's an exercise, and I remember some preparation meetings with Miriam asking me, well, what is the scenario now? Well, you will discover that the day of the exercise because it is not a demonstration. And that brings indeed an additional challenge because nobody knows what to expect. And well, that gives also a good outcome um, and a realistic outcome. And um, well, the, the scenarios were indeed realistic. The goal was to, to uh, be in line with the, the real life and uh, also to consider only what we call low, small and slow UAVs at NATO level, which are one part of the class one drone. So f uh, Phantom 4 from DJI, Parrot Disco, that is the kind of system we are using. Um, so there were different technologies, and I will not go into the details for these technologies because that's not the topic of today, but we were uh, really looking at all the technologies being mature enough on the market today and being able to capture what I call an escalation of force from going from the jamming that could work in certain circumstances to the hacking to the use of ground-based nets, uh, air-launched nets, kinetic systems and also the uh, laser uh, weapon. Um, wh wh what can we say about the, the laser weapon? Well, it has been a little bit different from for Silas compared to the other companies because, well, we are talking about lasers and we are on a firing range and you have certain constraints when you're using different weapons. and. The, the laser weapons was constrained in some part of the firing range that was also constraining the scenarios. That being said, uh, we've been using rotary wing, fixed wing systems, and the laser has been uh, quite successful. And I, I've noted some, some positive points as some uh, agnostic, let's say, user. I'm not paid, I'm not on the, on the payroll uh, of Silas, so I can say what I like and what I like less. And Laurent doesn't know at all what I will say now. It's maybe a bit sweating. Um, <laughs> but at first it works. Uh, I, I was one of these people um, who, who were very excited about experiencing the, the laser because I, I had seen, had the opportunity to, to see a lot of different technologies. Laser in Sardinia was the first time for me. So I was quite excited and I was also excited to see that it was working because I, I have maybe trust problems. I only believe what I see. Uh, and I was very happy to, to be able to see some successful uh, neutralization based on my drones, uh, drones being piloted by people I knew, and I knew nobody were like cheating at, at any level. The, the second point is the range. Uh, you mentioned uh, the laser beam is super quick, so that is certainly the system from the, the and the technology as well from the different technologies on range that was able to cope with the longest range so no, no discussion about that and we constrain the the max range because of the shooting range you, you are able to do more than that uh, then you mentioned the time of flight and m my background is ballistics weapons so for me a laser that is a bullet that is going straight that is going extremely quickly and that is not falling on the ground. So it's indeed, even if the drone is moving, practically that movement will be insignificant. If I compare to a bullet, even a very quick bullet from a machine gun, the drone might be moving. You need, what, half of a second to reach the distance at which the drone is. So the drone might be 10 meter on the side compared to the initial position. So you, you, you have to predict that. You make mistakes when you predict that. So uh, you, you, well, you need to have a good prediction and then to bring the bullet where you want. It's, I think, easier and that has a big added value in terms of the, the laser. 
So the, the bullet is not falling down, so that's good. You don't receiving on your head if you are a bit further, which is uh, always a, a, a problem indeed. And um, at the end of the day as well, we are talking here about a di directed energy weapon. And a lot of people, uh, including at NATO level, are, are very excited about directed energy weapons. And we are maybe thinking, well, that is a huge footprint. You need a nuclear power plant in your backpack. Well, that's not the case. Uh, the, the system is, is relatively compact and you can use it. We were in the middle of nowhere and we were completely able with uh, a relatively small installation to use the, the laser. Uh, I, I can give also some, uh, let's say, points to develop, uh, like we, we say today in, uh, in management, things we need to, to work on. And certainly, we, we need to learn more about the laser, not, not the technology itself. And that's something that we, we manage, and certainly uh, you are at Silas. But if I take my own experience in Sardinia, Every day, and Miriam did a lot about that, uh, every day we had a different setup because at the very beginning, um, the range has a lot of constraints, protections for the people uh, using the system being in the range. And then, well, test after test, people realize, well, that is working. Well, uh, it is okay. Well, we, we went too far and each day, we were able to have a lower level of uh, protection, but still being safe. And at the end of the day, we finished with a distinguished, distinguished visitor day, and we were able to show the laser neutralizing a drone to the DVs without eye protection. So we asked them, okay, look, look in the sky, you will see the, 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 the drone becoming very bright, you can have a look at that. Your eyes will not fall down, will not be burned, and so on. So we, we need to learn and, and to know exactly wh where the limit is. Um, a, a second point, and that is the case for a lot of technologies, it is a one-on-one. -on -one. So it, it's, it's a ray, it's a beam. So uh, if you deal with swarms, which will be coming at some point, you're still a one-on-one. -on -one. And that's not specific to the laser. That's also the case for bullets. That's the case for nets, for other technologies as well. But that is something to consider. And um, well, as well, collateral damage, that is also something that is linked to many technologies. Each one of them has advantages. I mentioned the bullet is not falling down, which is one concern when you are firing uh, a regular weapon system. Um, well, you need to deconflict the air, the use of aircraft, for example. You need to deconflict that. That is also the case with missiles, for example, but that is something to do. So that, that is, in, in a nutshell, uh, some insights from my perspective. Uh, I'm not buying anything. I'm not receiving money um, from the companies. And uh, well, so I hope I, I was able to give you here an honest review uh, of that, and we can uh, go deeper about certain points, certainly during the discussion. Thank you very much, Alexandre. Thank you, for and Laurent for explaining all this to us. Now, I have a question for Maryam, uh, because we talked about the exercise, but uh, can you explain us exactly how the system works in practice? Okay, sure. Good morning, everybody. Uh, maybe, yes, good, thank you. Uh, you have a picture of uh, the system Elmapi uh, in Sardinia. So uh, you can see uh, we have um, many components on the system to, to, to do a good functioning. So we have um, uh, here a, a turret composed uh, by a sub uh, system, uh, optronic system. You have uh, the collimator. Maybe I can. Uh, Thank you. It's uh, more easy to explain to you. So here we have the turret, and here you have a, a collimator where the laser beam uh, go out to do, do the neutralization. And uh, you have two other major components, uh, a wild fi field camera, uh, and uh, in the other side, maybe if we have another picture, This one, a lidar to to realize the, the research of the 
of the target, so for the drone. And uh, with this turret, we need to have a central unit to do uh, uh, to to use uh, the control the and to have a post control station with uh, an HMI and uh, also a chiller to 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 freeze the. Uh, uh, the, all these components in the collimator. Okay. So usually, um, sorry, thank you, everyone. Uh, you need we in Sardinia uh, the system was coupled with a, a radar to realize this radar need uh, help us to do the primo detection to to give us. Um, a, um, a window, uh, a closed window to, to research the drone, so it, it can give us uh, the, um, the first position of uh, when, uh, where is uh, the target. And after that, the, the, the turret uh, um, do a rallying to, to, to position the view uh, uh, to this target and the LiDAR help us to, to find, uh, to help us to, to find precisely uh, this target. So uh, after that, uh, we have in the, in the collimator, we have a, a small feed camera, uh, and this, uh, the treatment for the, for the rest of the sequence uh, do, uh, is done by uh, this camera. So uh, you can see, uh, in the screen, uh, a tracking of a drone, and after that we can um, we can do the treatment of a different image and see uh, in the screen of the HMI the the the, the, the image of the, the drone, and after that we can uh, refocus the drone and put uh, the reticle laser where we need to to shoot. Precisely, and after that we can do the. We have after after to have a, a formal agreement by authorities, like in Sardinia, uh, we can uh, do the neutralization, and after that we can see uh, in the screen the 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 drone fall, and uh, and to do the neutralization we have a joystick with a trigger. And uh, when we stop, we can release the trigger, and uh, uh, the sequence uh, of neutralization uh, is done and finished. Miriam, you mentioned the radar coupled to NMAP. Yeah. What happens if the radar falls? So it's uh, it's not the better way <laughs> to, but uh, we have. A, a, I saw you uh, a, a picture with a wide field camera, and we can use it in a different si situation. We can use this camera to to identify the area where the drone can be can be. So we can use it. In, in fact, it's really difficult to to uh, detect a drone at one kilometer uh, in the sky. So the, the main um, uh, asset to, to detect it is the radar, of course, but uh, we, we know that radar may be long uh, to, uh, to detect. It can take uh, one, 10 seconds sometimes. So um, around the, the laser, there is, um, we have to learn to use it, as I said, uh, Alexander. Um, especially where to put the laser. Um, the, the range of the laser is one kilometer. So it means you don't need to put it on the zone to protect. You can put it at three, four, five hundred of the zone to protect so that you can um, orient uh, at the beginning, of, uh, you can orient uh, immediately the laser toward this, uh, this zone to be ready to shoot anything uh, um, entering uh, in this zone, and especially a drone who will raise from the ground and uh, that you haven't detected before. 
and you, you maybe maybe you can shoot it immediately because we can see it with the wide uh, range of camera or maybe by the, with the lidar. This use case has to be uh, tested. We have to uh, to make it on the terrain because it is uh, today a uh, supposition. Uh, and that the, the challenge uh, today with the laser is to learn to use it. How many people do we need to use the, the system? Only one person needs uh, to, to, to pilot the HMI, so only one person. Thank you. And to complete that, as uh, Alexander said, only one day to learn to, uh, to shoot. And it is really easy. Why? Because that's not uh, like a gun. With a gun, you have to, uh, to control your movement, your, your finger, to, etc. Laser, you use a graphic user interface. So you have to click with a mouse on the picture to tell to the, uh, to order to the system to fire. So it's uh, really easy, no difficulty. The real difficulty of uh, the shooter is to know where to hit on the drone. And it depends on the materials, because there is some materials more vulnerable uh, with uh, the laser, and also where in the system. When we shoot at a DJI Phantom Cat, for, uh, for instance, at the beginning, uh, we, we, we thought that the battery was uh, more vulnerable, but it was really long, maybe 10 seconds to, uh, to shoot, to, to, to neutralize the drone. And after, we said, okay, maybe on the front, where there is uh, electronic uh, cards, and we, do, we did that, and some, some drones fold, fold down um, within one second, less one second. And some, some of them, you, you couldn't see uh, the burn. It is no trace. And the drone, after, could, uh, can uh, work again, uh, because, in fact, the electronic card uh, uh, goes in a safety, uh, safety mode, and when uh, the, the temperature uh, becomes normal, it can, uh, it can fly uh, again. So the, 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 the training is around that, the uh, knowledge of the interaction between laser and material, and the knowledge of the vulnerable uh, points of the system. So, Laurent, you, you talked about training. It was an exercise, right? But uh, maybe, Alexandre, can you explain the difference be between an exercise and an experimentation? I think you already talked about the soldier using the, the system. Uh, this is one difference, right? Yeah, yeah, indeed. So, th there is a big difference because at first, usually demonstrations means that the company is operating the technology or the system. And, well, we, we, we can assume you are well trained and you know what you're doing. Um, if I take my role, I'm working for, for the, the MOD, uh, if I take my role as um, representative of some users, the, the burden of the training should be as minimum as possible. Today, the soldiers need to be trained for a lot of things, their basic tasks, but also communication and so on. And, well, if you need a few months of training on the system just uh, to, 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 to remove drones from the sky, that is not very effective. And certainly in the framework of that exercise, that NATO exercise, we are in a multinational context. The world was full of COVID at that time, so it was very difficult to have people moving, especially from the UK to France, to be able to be trained. So our goal was to have the training or to keep the training as low as possible to be able to operate the system in a safe way. Uh, and indeed, I don't know at the end of the day how many days you use to train the, the British soldiers, but that has been uh, very limited and the people were able to successfully use the systems. And well, indeed, that is, that is a big difference. One of the differences uh, between a demonstration and uh, an exercise. Thank you. I have just one last question, and then I give you the, the floor. Um, I don't know if you can answer the question, but how to define an efficient laser weapon? 
Is that for me? <laughs> I don't know. Or Laurent? Maybe. Well, I, on, on my side, I would be technology agnostic. And for all the technologies, we would like to have a quick effect and an effect that is quite predictable, that you know when you push on the button, what will happen? Will it be, as Laurent said, something reversible? In some situations, that's something you want. Uh, in other situations, you might want to have a physical destruction. And maybe um, th that is a place for the laser weapon, because on that one, you can turn the button you can adjust the power, you can adjust possibly the divergence or the, the angle of the, the beam and have some kind of scalable effects. But the, the predictability, you know what will happen, that is super important on, on my side anyway. Uh, I, uh, I am fully agree with you and I can compete with, um, with some, uh, some uh, ideas. Uh, in fact, when you use a weapon, you, you, you know before uh, the shoot what we can do with it. Uh, if uh, it is a surprise at each time, we won't use it. Uh, um, it's normal. So you must have a, a complete control of uh, the uh, damage or the effect of the system. And today, that's a difficulty with uh, laser but because laser is new. Um, so uh, we have to 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 to, um, to have a more uh, knowledge uh, about the laser, the laser effect. Um, what the effect on different materials? Somebody told me uh, when you uh, if you put a mirror on a on a drone, what can happen? So. Uh, we, we try it, for instance, we, we, put, uh, we, we, we shoot on a mirror and the mirror uh, doesn't, uh, didn't reflect a lot because uh, immediately uh, it what burns because mirror uh, where there is, uh, is not a good quality, uh, so immediately it burns. Uh, when you shoot on, uh, on uh, some different metals, the effect is different. When you shoot on uh, uh, um, a g a glass, du verre, c'est ça, du verre, du verre, yes. Um, it, it can go through, but if you have different layer of uh, glass, the, the, um, it, it will uh, it will be um, it will explode because uh, the, the, the heat will stay in the mirror, the glass, and uh, it can be uh, um, it can be explode. It can explode when you eat on um, different explosives like a mine or a toilet for for pilot for people who know the different explosives you can provoke without a detonator you can explode the, the mine for instance etc so you have we have to learn more on the effect of the of the laser um, and uh, tomorrow when we use it we have to have a good idea of that, of the effect uh, of, uh, of the laser. And so that, at this moment, we can say it is an efficient uh, system. Thank you very much. Do you have questions for our speakers? Uh, yes, good morning. I have two questions. One is considering the energy consumption. Can the, how much energy does it consume and will I be able to deploy it in the field without a external power source? And the second question which I have is do you need a certain level of safety, safety a laser safety training? So uh, for uh, the power you need one or two nuclear power um, plants. <laughs> No, it's a, a very few uh, energy. Um, in fact, uh, the important, uh, what is important in the, in the laser is not the energy, of the, the power of the laser. It is a density of energy that you put on the, uh, on the target. And this density is, a, is a po uh, the power divided by the size of the uh, beam. So if you have a big size, you know that you, more, you, have, you need more power 
uh, to have the same effect as uh, a small system. So in this system, we have a, I don't know uh, what what's the, the energy. It is a 10 kilowatts. Sorry. Uh, for this demonstrator, because it's a demonstrator, uh, not a fixed product, um, it's a 10 kilowatt for this demonstration, um, uh, and we need a three-phase and monophase uh, energy. And tomorrow we will have a battery, and uh, when you have battery, you can uh, eat, you can shoot. Uh, as long as you want, uh, no, no problem for that. I can I can just add, um, Miriam uh, is saying 10 kilowatt. I can confirm that you did not go over that threshold because I was responsible for uh, the the electricity and the, the power supply on range, and uh, so you, you were under that. And indeed, uh, I can clearly imagine that that system being mounted on a on a vehicle without any problem uh, of, of energy supply. I mean, uh, you, you were not the, the the most difficult client on the range uh, these days. And concerning the safety training, it's, it is like uh, any system. Uh, when you uh, drive a car, you have a, you, you must have a safety training. Um, so, but for, for the laser, it's the same. You need to have a safety training to learn it uh, correctly and to uh, to limit the accidents uh, and so on. The, the, the laser weapon is new, but on the battlefield we, we have a lot of laser already. Uh, my, my background is indirect fire artillery. You have uh, big range finders, long range range finders that are not eye safe. Uh, you have um, for GTAC, you have uh, designators using lasers that are also not uh, eye safe. So indeed, like for these systems, you need the operators to know the rules, to know the limits, and to be properly trained. But that, that is not specific to the laser. Huh? That is also the same for a gun or for, for any, any technology that you, that you put in the hands of the, of the operator. Thank you. Other questions? Good morning. So, uh, what kind of sorry? What kind of laser did he use in this setup, and what was the wavelength of it? Okay. Can you hear me now? <laughs> what kind of laser did he use in this setup, and what was the wavelength of it? Uh, the wavelength is uh, not visible uh, wavelength. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, in fact, uh, you you may you may have different uh, laser wavelengths uh, for different kinds. Of this one is a uh, is a wavelength uh, irritated from the industry because uh, technology was already there. So it is less expensive to uh, to develop it. And uh, we think to develop other wavelengths, maybe more uh, safe for uh, ocular, ocular hazards, etc. And the laser type? Uh, the type of laser? The type of laser, what do you mean by type of laser? So Actually, it's a technology, it's a continuous uh, laser, not simple, continuous. And um, uh, the, the, yes, in fact, we, we, we speak about laser for four years, uh, years, and ten years. What is changing uh, today? It is the technology to um, to uh, to create the laser. And uh, today we use um, optical uh, fiber. And uh, the, the advantage of the system is that you can have a very long uh, fiber to emit the, the laser, and, we, uh, and it don't takes a lot of room because you can uh, make a bobbin for that. And because of the technology, you need more room, 
you need uh, more um, uh, you can create more power etc et and that's the difference with the uh, the other uh, technologies like uh, um, gas or etc and this is one thing uh, silas does very well you know to roll the the fiber uh, this is a competence we have and it uh, enhances us to um, have um, less power and have a very, very power hit on the targets. Good morning. Thank you for your explanation. So I'm a little, little bit confused. I came a little bit late. I maybe. Uh, I could miss some of your explanation. So uh, from the point of view, operational soldiers, so even though it's a demonstration, not in operation field, so but yeah, but uh, how heavy or uh, uh, then how big it is, so including power source. You, you also uh, explained and some with the battery, it's more comfortable, but uh, maybe if you really make some successful battery so it could be a breakthrough in the technology <laughs> so I, I mean so uh, the plan I don't know exactly the, the, which plan the road map of yours is it uh, how carried in the by mobile uh, mo mo uh, uh, by car or the carry and then the some only one soldier it's a what's the operational concept of it this uh, uh, your laser in the weapon system. Well, this system uh, is a fixed p uh, fixed system, so you have to. In fact, it takes a one uh, squ uh, one square uh, meter around around that around uh, three four thousand uh, four thousand four um, four hundred excuse me four hundred kilos. So it's not so it's not uh, a lot. So you can um, uh, put it in a, in a vehicle, and you can take time to deploy it. it. It takes only one hour. But actually, we are uh, currently we are working on integration in a, a vehicle. And so, um, if you go and see uh, MBDA, very very is. Uh, um, a vehicle with our system integrated in, uh, in their car, in a um, uh, combat vehicle. And uh, we are working on uh, putting it on a robot, a ground robot. Uh, and you, if you go uh, on our both, you can see a maquette of that to, to give an idea. So it's not a system really heavy. And the robot, for instance, is able to provide the energy needed for, uh, for the system. Other questions? Well, if you uh, you want to add something, Laurent? Yes, please. So, uh, somehow, the somewhat to conclude. Um, today, uh, uh, what we have done with these systems. There was different steps, and very important steps. Uh, the first one was uh, a technical trials uh, made uh, during uh, Biscarros uh, last year. During uh, Sardinia, we have uh, proved that operational people can, uh, can uh, be trained to use this system, and this system can be used in an operational context. So it's not perfect. We have to work on it, but we have a. Uh, it was a new step, and the next steps uh, may will be to um, to use uh, to to um, to be. Uh, you have to be accepted by the forces for the French DGA, and the objective is the uh, 2024 uh, Olympic Olympics uh, Games, where the system. Uh, may be used to protect the different uh, uh, zones. Thank you very much. This concludes our conference. Have a nice day.